Welcome back everyone. This is Kat from Alley Cat's Quilt Shop and we are continuing on with our Getting to Know Hue Block of the Month quilt. This month we are going to be creating Block 11. I am going to start out with the Lone Star in cutting and piecing and then at the end of that I am going to um, walk you through the Improv Star and the Strippy Star, which are a little bit easier than the Lone Star. So we're gonna do the hardest one first and then we'll um, refer back to the other two. So in your Block 11 kit, you received a lot of fat quarters, one half yard piece, and a couple of fat eighths. So the first thing that Nancy recommends is that we press these fabrics and use some spray starch. We are going to be cutting the strip sets on the bias. So we definitely wanna make sure that we have um, uh, some spray starch in our fabric to keep the bias from stretching on us. I love and sell the Mary Ellen's Best Press, and I highly recommend it. I also do the Scent Free. Um, for those of you who have um, sensitivities to fragrance, they're, it's really hard to find a commercial one out there on the shelf that doesn't have fragrance. So I love this because um, you can get it scent free. I have my fabrics laid out here. I'm gonna back the camera up just a second here. So here are my stacks of fabric that I've already spray starched and pressed. These are my two fat eights. Notice that I have all my fabrics laying on my cutting table with all the salvage edges towards me. I'm gonna try and back out just a little bit more for you because I have them oriented with the 18 inch side toward me and the 21 inch side running away from me. So we have to cut our strip sets now that we're gonna sew together and then cut back apart on the, on the diagonal. So we are going to start by cutting the number of strips. These are two and an eighth by 21. So we're gonna be cutting them two and an eighth by 21, the full uh, long, side of our fabric pieces. The other fabric that we're asked to cut is our bat, our stick fabric that we're using as our background for our Lone Star. And we need to cut a 22 and a half inch square and then cut it in half twice diagonally to make four C triangles. And it says, no, they're oversized to allow for trimming. So let me show you how I am going to cut mine because this is a very large triangle and I don't have a ruler long enough and I'm guessing you probably won't either. So here is my 22 and a half inch stick background fabric that I have already cut. I did press that, but I see a little, little bit of a fold there, so. I typically like these pressed super flat. So what I've done is I've taken my 22 and a half inch square and placed it on my cutting mat. And in order to be able to cut this perfectly straight from tip to tip diagonally, I have taken and put my bottom tip right on my 43 inch line. It doesn't matter which line, just put the tip right on a line. And then I'm gonna lay my ruler. I can line it up down here. And then because I don't have a ruler long enough, I'm gonna come around to this side of my cutting table. Look at my messy floor. And I have taken and placed the other tip on that exact same line, now this is metric, so I've got a different number here, but it is, I double checked and made sure I had this lane laid out. 
um, so that the tips are on the exact same line. And I'm gonna take another ruler and I'm gonna place it along this line. And to make sure that my rulers are straight, I'm gonna look at this horizontal line here and line it up with the line on my mat so that I know I have a true uh, 90 degree angle here. Is that 45? And did the same thing down there, so now I know I have a straight line here. Now I'm gonna carefully, very slowly, I'm gonna cut up until the end of here, and then I'm gonna switch my hand over to this ruler and continue cutting. Um, the other thing you can do is you can fold your triangle, your, excuse me, you can fold your square in half and line up your tips and line it up on your mat and cut it. But I, I prefer to use this method. So you can do it either way you want, but this is how you can cut a length that's larger than your ruler. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my four triangles and cut my strips and then I'll meet you back here and we'll get all of our strip sets laid out and I'll show you how um, we can make a little jig to sew them together accurately. Okay, I'm back and I have cut all of my 2 and an eighth by 21 inch strips from all of the colors and just have them kind of stacked up randomly here. Now I'm going to start building my diamonds. So if you look over here, I am working on strip set one piecing uh -huh. diagram. And I have laid out my strips in the color shown in the book. And it says to offset each strip by uh, approximately an inch and three quarters. So what I've done is I just took a scrap piece of paper and I cut a one and three quarter inch square. And when I um, lay the next strip out, so I'm gonna use my little jig, my little paper. That way I don't have to try and count on the mat because that would take a lot longer. So I'm just gonna set my little jig up here and then I'm going to place the next, oops, uh, so red, green, and then I'm missing a magenta in here. So I have go back to my color set. So I've got my peach, the dark burgundy, and then I should have, so double check your colors, make sure you've got them in the right order. So I'm going to use my jig here, and then I'm going to put the magenta bubble into position, I'm trying to hold the camera with my other hand. So let's just scooch it up here, okay. And then the next color is gonna be my red toss. So then that's gonna go into position there. So that way um, I would lay these out and just get a visual and make sure that you've got the color sequence going on here. And then I'm gonna bring my jig down, bring this green flower into position. And then my final color down here is going to be this basket weave. So there is strip set one using my little jig. Now, I can either start from this end or this end, and now we're just going to pick these up in pair, pairs and sew them together. So I'm gonna just flip this on top, and I'm gonna go ahead and pieces together and then do a little pressing. So I'm gonna show you, um, I'm gonna go ahead and piece this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I'll meet you over at the press surface and we'll 
look at how we're going to keep these nice and straight. Okay, I've sewn my quarter of an inch seam allowance on two of my strips, and so I have just brought them over to the ironing board, and I'm going to just lay them out nice and straight. And I like, I have my seam to on the back, on the back of my strip. So I have the open side in front of me. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set the seam with some steam. I love using steam. It really um, helps to keep everything nice and straight and flat. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this back all at once. And I'm going to just take my fingers in here and do what we call a finger press in the quilting world. I'm going to try and get my arm over here. So the, I'm just going to take and do a finger press here. Now this, do, it is an extra step. And it is going to add a little bit of time on, but because we need this to be perfectly straight, we don't want it to go wonky on us as we are working with these diagonally cut strip sets. If you take the time to make sure that these stay perfectly straight before we start cutting, you're going to end up with a much better finished um, Lone Star. So now that I have this finger pressed open, I'm going to come back in with my steam and I'm just going to pop it down. I'm not going to run the iron back and forth either way. I'm just going to set it down, hit it with some steam, pick it up. Now I have a beautifully sewn and pressed unit that is poker straight and that's what we want. I'm going to go back over and lay this back into position, pick up two more, bring them over here, do the same thing. As soon as I get this unit sewn together, then I'll meet you back here and we're going to cut. Okay, we, I have strip set one pieced and I am getting ready to trim one edge on a 45 degree angle. So what you're going to want to do is look on your ruler for a 45 degree line and you're going to line this up with a horizontal line on your cutting mat. And what that will do is give you along the edge a true 45. So I am going to go ahead and trim this off. Like so. Come on. There's always one. And now we need to cut four two and an eighth inch st strips on the 45. So now we can use our ruler so that the lines of our ruler line up with the lines of our cut end. And I'm going to find the two and an eighth mark here on my ruler. And I'm going to put that mark down the edge. I'm trying not to move. Okay, there's my two and an eighth, and there's my two and an eighth, but my strip set moved. So I'm going to, there we go. So I'm going to look at the top and look at the bottom before I drop it. And hopefully, and all oh, my center is rightly positioned. I'm going to try and line up my 45 again and see 
if things shifted because I'm not getting a true no that's right so now I'm going to come over here two and an eighth two and an eighth there I'm just not looking at it correctly <laughs> there we go helps when you you may even want to put a little piece of tape right along that line at the two and an eighth inch marking um, so I was lining it up correctly up here, but I wasn't lining it up correctly down there. So I'm going to double check this, and I've got one, two, and an eighth all the way down. I like to have my black hash mark right sitting on top of my fabric. So now I'm going to, I took the handle off of my ruler so that I could show you my 45 degree line. Um, I typically don't cut without my handle, but in this instance, I am going to, just so you can see the lines on the ruler. I also have this nice uh, grippy, tape that I sell from Handy Quilter on the edge of my ruler to keep it from sliding. So here is my first two and an eighth inch strip. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to cut three more. But if my ruler has, if my ruler slides at all, 